It's 2006 and Fernando Alonso has just successfully defended his world title, becoming a two-time world champion at just the age of 25. 2006 would also signal the exit of his main competitor, Michael Schumacher, with the German retiring from all forms of motorsport, leaving F1 as a seven-time world champion. So Alonso was in a very good position to potentially dominate the next couple of seasons in F1, even though he had made the shock decision to move to McLaren for 2007, signing a three-year deal with the team, and to ensure the Spaniard was their number Number one priority, McLaren partnered him with a rookie, just a chap by the name of Lewis Hamilton. And although Alonso didn't take part in pre-season testing, it seemed McLaren and Ferrari had the quickest cars on the grid, with Renault being quite far behind but still on average the third quickest car at testing. After opening in Bahrain in 2006, F1 returned to the beloved Australia for the first race. Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen, formerly of McLaren as of the previous year, took pole position by four tenths, with Alonso qualifying second and Hamilton three tenths behind him in fourth. Quite the expected qualifying result. Come race day, when the five lights went out, both McLarens got away poorly as the Cybers of Nick Heidfeld and Robert Gubitza moved up to second and fourth respectively. But a move that would signal the talent of Alonso's rookie teammate when he moved to the outside of the first corner not only retaking fourth place but also leapfrogging his world champion teammate to find himself in third alonso would only reclaim second after the second round of pit stops due to being on the preferred strategy hamilton would bring it home in third to ensure double podium for mclaren but the rookie had announced himself to the f1 world in some style and after round one there was no doubt that 2007 was going to be ferrari versus mclaren with these four men battling it out to become champion alonso would pick up his first win in malaysia at the next race, leading every lap bar when he pitted, but once again his young teammate was right on his heels in second. For the next couple of races, Ferrari and McLaren would trade race wins, and Lewis Hamilton became a serious threat to Alonso when he won his first race in Canada, and backed that up a week later, winning in the States, after racing wheel to wheel with Alonso and coming out on top, leading to this iconic podium photo. Maybe due to a favourable strategy, but he was leading the race, and at this point the two drivers were treated equally, and Hamilton led the standings by 10 points to Alonso, due to his consistency. But this would all come to a head on the 3rd of July, when Ferrari sacked one of its engineers, Nigel Stepney, after an investigation, which also resulted in a further sacking of McLaren engineer, Mike Cockman. This of course would develop into the Spygate scandal, which is basically when Big Nige decided to leak details about the 2008 Ferrari car to Michael, because he was raging at Ferrari for not promoting him, and hearings would follow suit that proved that no one at McLaren other than Coughlin knew about the information. Now you'd think it wouldn't get any worse for McLaren in 2007. But early on in qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix, Hamilton was ordered by McLaren to let Alonso through so we could have some clean air for a qualifying lap. Hamilton refused, wanting the clean air for himself. Alonso returned to the pits with just over two minutes remaining to change his tyres in order to go back out for another run. And at about the 1 minute 51 mark, Hamilton came in behind him, looking to do the same. McLaren held Alonso for a few extra seconds, but once they lifted the lollipop, Alonso stayed stationary for an extra 10 seconds. Therefore, holding up loose enough, that he would not have a last opportunity to grab. Bit naughty, I think. Ron Dennis was visibly furious, and the team would be called to yet another FIA hearing, where it was decided that Alonso purposefully held up Hamilton, so he would be demoted to sixth, and McLaren would not score any constructors' points that race. And you'd think, surely, surely, that was it. Just water under the bridge from here, a fresh start. But let's not forget, Fernando Alonso used to be a bit of a cunt, and on the morning of the race, it was confirmed he met with Ron Dennis, in which he admitted that him and Del Rosa collaborated with Coughlin to use the Ferrari information, and that if he didn't get his first driver preference back, he would reveal all to the FIA. And considering that the FIA was led to believe no one was involved, big consequences would surely come. Dennis did not respond well to this sort of threat, and in a bit of a panic, went to Max Mosley, the head of the FIA, which resulted in them opening up a further investigation. And McLaren would be dealt a 100 million fine, and were disqualified from the Instructors Championship for 2007. After this, Dennis and Alonso's relationship spiralled. But you see, a lot of people claim that the FAA and McLaren were against Alonso, and there's only slight evidence that I can find, and I don't even know if you can call this evidence.
it didn't seem like any mechanic wanted to celebrate Alonso's win. And Ron Dennis was quite muted with the celebrations, although that could be because McLaren were about to get their hefty punishment. One other example could be the qualifying at the Chinese Grand Prix, where Alonso complained that McLaren had messed with the pressure of his tyres, causing him to be six tenths slower than his teammate. The biggest gap, by some distance, the two had been separated by all season. And the final race in Interlagos was pure chaos. Hamilton out qualified Alonso again, but slipped to seventh after a bad start and Alonso was in third, which meant at that moment Alonso was leading the championship. But everyone in McLaren was focused on Lewis's bad start, probably showing that they did not give one fuck if Alonso won the championship. But this is just a point that shows McLaren didn't want Alonso to win. It doesn't mean they intentionally sabotaged him. Lewis then had a problem with his gears that slowed him drastically, losing multiple positions in the space of a few corners. In the end, neither McLaren driver would win that year's championship, as Kimi Raikkonen would win in Brazil to claim his first and only title. By one point, to both Hamilton and Alonso. So was Alonso purposefully sabotaged? Well it looks like that's up to you. 